I am trying to finish up Boulder's Gate 2 and get to the point where I last left off from my previous run, so that way we're not going through molten... So I'm not... I mean, probably actually could have did another, did another run of Boulder's Gate with you guys and had no... and it probably would have been fine. And maybe have finished uh, throwing a ball. Because that's where we left off. That's where my game bugged out. And I was like, no, sir, you cannot have a proper working game. Okay. So, last we left off, we tried going through a tomb. We tried. And then we ran into a bunch of mobs that were higher level than us. And I decided, no, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. That's where we left off. Another thing I was Payment considering, I think I'm probably going to take out uh, Maya. I yeah, I think we're going to take out Maya for uh, to get Shoddy back. Because I kind of really need a healer. I mean, I liked the having the extra companion with us. But at the same time, it's just like, I, I don't, I don't know. Though, show, oh, though when we get back, Shoji's going to be a uh, lower level than us. Most likely. And she'll be leveling up at a slower rate than all of us, which I'm, which I'm not going to be quite happy about. Incense. Offerings for the temple. Four hours to exit the city. Sure. All right. As you read, uh, ready your ship. A cloaked figure mounts the gangplank and rough, uh, rough, roughly forces a burned book into your hands. They turn and depart without a word. Read. The burned book of law. The binding of this tome reeks of smoke. What few pages remain are crinkled and black. Based on the few chapter, uh, chapter heaters that survived the fire damage, this might have been a book of antiqu antiquated laws. Now it's nothing more than a charred relic of authority. Open the book. Crack the spine of the old book, revealing blackened pages of dense, illegible text. The words recede into the shadows the longer you focus on them. Suddenly, the page widens to eclipse the world around you. A dark void stretches out on all sides. The air full of choking fumes that carry dying embers and curling flakes of ash. Call out. Hello? Is anyone there? Something stirs in the darkness. An old woman steps forward. Oh, hello. Leering down at you from on high. Her smile is toothy and cruel. Her cheeks warp around it like melted candle wax. I'm so glad that my message would track you down. These days it's impossible to find good help. Wodica. Watcher, before you draw your weapon, know that these proceedings are under a banner of peace. If this was a trap, it would have already closed around you. While Barath whispers in one ear and Aethus shouts in the other, I thought you could use a more seasoned perspective to drown out the noise. Alright, I'm intrigued. Let's talk. Don't you find it unusual how open and accessible my siblings have made themselves? After millennia of subdued whispers, now they practically scream their intentions. And isn't it strange how we never bicker unless a mortal is watching? God, they're a dramatic bunch by nature. By necessity, in fact. But that's hardly the point. If we still possessed our glorious titans, my siblings and I would have put an end to Aethys and his rampage by now. 
While we are powerless to stop him, some of my kin wish to observe how mortals respond to this threat. They think it will shine a light on the value of our patronage. Have we raised you well enough to be self-sufficient? Or must we return to Aora and impose some corrective measures? And if we prove ourselves, what then? What indeed? That would depend on which of us you ask. A cross-section of society has converged on the dead father. Some of my kin are of an opinion that we are meant to judge mortals on the basis of their performance. While the rest of us have already made up our minds on the matter. So why do you- why do I get the feeling you're trying to convince me of something? Judge for yourself. But I think you'll find my intentions are more straightforward than you think. When we ascended to Godhood, we did so to provide for a savage people. Our goal was to craft a society whose values were made to last. Perhaps even a society that had no need of us. A naive fallacy, but one that inspired my optimistic, misguided kin. How you and your allies counter this threat will demonstrate whether you are competent enough to guide your own destinies, or if we need to revise our strategy. The soft-hearted among us are counting on you to win this existential wager. No doubt, Aethus shares their sympathies. I do not. We exist to rule over mortals. Nothing can change that. So now you know the truth. I assume you have questions. Why did you choose to confide in me? Whether knowingly or unintentionally, you seem to find yourself on the vanguard of change. Mortals like you come but once in a lifetime. Some would react poorly if I stripped mortals of their freedom without giving them a chance to plead their case. You have the honor of standing tall as their advocate. Before I return to Aora and assume my position as your deserving tyrant, you have this opportunity to prove me wrong, to demonstrate whether or not mortals are responsible enough to claim their future. You speak as if we don't have a chance. You speak as if you do. Mortals have precious little time to decide for themselves. Will they stand together as one, or swallow their pride and bend the knee? I have every confidence that you will disappoint us. Once my position is upheld, the undecided among the gods will embrace my plan. The gods think my actions can prove their point by mortal society? Prove it or disprove it, yes. I never agreed to this arrangement. But if your example demonstrates mortal ineptitude, as I trust it will, then I can make the plan serve me. An assertive minority of gods believe that your choices will prove the value of their wild optimism. As if mortal collaboration and ingenuity are endorsements of our leadership. Then there are those of us who know better, who are not so easily convinced. Kith are vulnerable, unless they submit to the destiny we charge for them. Thinking otherwise can only breed dissent and chaos. Oh. Tell me about this enlightened society you once wanted. It was an ambitious plan, our utopia. Perhaps too ambitious. We ascended to power, responding to a need inadequately satisfied. Assuming these roles gave us the authority to mold Aora over time, to influence you and lay the groundwork for a society yet to come. From the outset of the plan, some believed that mortals would outgrow us, as if that was a favorable outcome. To me, our eternal pantheon was always a critical fixture. Aethus was one of those who supported mortals. 
while I have always been their most vocal critic. How would you, <clears throat> how would you have even re uh, recognized that ideal society? A valid, self-defeating question, and one which I pose often. We assumed that they, whoever they were, would reveal themselves to us. Rational government would rule in our stead, leaving churches vacant. Thanks to Aethys, we're pulling the dough from the oven before it's had a chance to fully rise. You unfortunate bastards never had the chance to prove me wrong. Why do the other gods tolerate your opposition? Opposition can take many forms. If a church embraces and weaponizes my doctrine, that is very different from me rampaging as a titan. Aethys is not known for subtlety. Twice now, he has contaminated the purity of our experiment, and done so with extravagant displays that undermine our authority. Andra dropped a moon on Aora. What do you call that? Impulsive. I am the counterpoint to the soft hiding. It makes no difference if mortals pass some arbitrary test. My mind is settled on the matter. Regardless of my feelings, the timing of this crisis forces us to accelerate our schedule. Final judgment comes sooner than any of us would prefer. Huh. <clears throat> and what if someone proves you wrong? If our pantheon found that mortals had cultivated a perfect, lawful system to maturity, I would not voice a word in protest. I would merely stand aside and await the inevitable collapse. Mortals need us. I know this as well as I know myself. Even a lawful and responsible society would be poised to collapse as long as its architects and strongest adherents were mortal. Any satisfaction that my siblings derived from their little experiment would be short-lived. And it would fall to me to clean up after their mess. So you're right even when you're wrong. Got it. Make no mistake, Watcher. In this, I cannot be proven wrong. Doesn't the social engineering plan seem counterintuitive? You mean gods crafting a godless world? Naturally. My siblings desire to influence mortals and steer them in the proper direction. Even if that direction led to places we could not follow. I have no intention of being left behind. Society would unravel without its queen to impose strict order. Back to my other question. You have learned much already. Only ask if you are ready for the truth. Has your opinion of mortals changed at all? Nothing you've done has tarnished it utterly beyond repair. You may congratulate yourself on that much, at least. I want to talk about the wheel and your rise to godhood. The wheel is our shared responsibility, and each of us serves it in our own fashion. I am the axle upon which the gods balance their power. Aethys keeps the wheel in motion. He was our promise to mortals that time and labor would yield a deserving reward on the next turning of the cycle. How did the Anguithans become gods? At the height of our power, we recognized the potential of the soul. We knew that it could be bound, split apart, diverted like a river, and hammered together. Hammering was trivial. Those of us who agreed with the Apotheosis Project and many who did not, submitted to a violent and horrible erasure of our individuality. After the dust settled, we adopted the forms of beings from Aeora's most prevalent myths. There were other faiths and legends, but we labored to strike their names from history.
What a bunch of di selfish dicks. How exactly does the wheel function? Much of reincarnation's mechanism exists in the idea space of the beyond. You wouldn't find a wall of cogs and levers unless we conjured one to illustrate a point. The wheel has but one material component in all of Aora. Something we built to channel essence through luminous Adra and into the beyond with reliable continuity. Before we intervened, the flow of essence was directionless, unpredictable. We succeeded in widening the gap, diverting it, giving it an efficient path to follow. Reincarnation existed before you, so why not just leave it alone? Before we took control of the wheel, reincarnation was error prone, lacking forward momentum. Hollowborn were fairly common, and hardly the worst of the soul maladies. Control gave us the power to strengthen the souls of intelligent kith over generations. We made you wiser, stronger, more likely to develop the society we thought you deserved. Every turning of the cycle demonstrated the righteousness of my belief. Nature begets chaos, and discipline begets perfection. Speak, watcher. Yes, I think we will. This is not the end of our discussion. You know how to find your way back to this place. Wodica nods stiffly. You feel her presence drift as a breeze, rustling as it goes. Okay. Well, uh, there's that. So now we apparently have a walking. No, we had. We apparently Does now it have a. Uh, you, being so far removed from the rest of your order. Are you gonna call me heretical too? Of course not. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to pry. I didn't mean to jump on you. I'm just used to being called names. It's all right. I understand the feeling. That's the first conversation between those two, but uh, <clears throat> so now we apparently have a uh, a book with us that allows us to talk to God and talk to a god. That could definitely come in handy, but anyways, let's level up and show you real <clears throat> What do we want? We probably want. So plus two from the party. Still don't quite. I still don't under, quite understand the party assist. I'm, I'm gonna see if I can find that rule. Oh, excuse me. Uh, controls. No achievements. No. Where do I find the... Oh dear. No. Maybe in here? Ah, oh, tutorials. Here we are. Um, do, 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 do game system, bestiary, companion conversation, companion reputation, disposition. Uh, enchanting ingredients. In, uh, uh, I should probably read this real quick. Uh, triggering a trap or being knocked out during combat will apply an injury to, the, uh, to that character. Injuries remain on the character until they use food or drink while resting, or by resting at an end. Pressing the fire button in the lower center of the screen or use the R key to rest. Oh, that's all there is in that. Uh, dialogue. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, there's psych. Oh, there's sidekicks. Sidekicks uh, start out as unique NPCs integral to specific quests, complete with their own personalities and looks. And they may offer to join your party as a reward for completing their quest. Just like companions, these new characters have a custom portrait and a voice sound set. However, unlike companions, they do not have their own vision quest and will not participate in the companion relationship system. Oh. Oh, so then probably the girl who we were who we recruited maybe that was a sidekick huh no no, that's enchanting ingredients. Petition. UI. Companion conversations. Shouldn't it be like part of dialogue? Huh. Well. That's a bit unfortunate, really. Game, you're missing a tutorial. <clears throat> what the hell is... Well, okay. Um... You're... Yeah, let's go and... Let's go that. But why not? Boom, boom, done. Okay. What? Two points. Spell shape. Oh. Uh, cyan. Flame. Okay, I'm not really caring about any of that. You are friendly AoE. Yes. That one I like. You are that one I also like. Boom. There's our spells. Done. There we go. Done. Turns out I, turns out I might like this party set up a lot better than the other ones. Okay, let's look at my quests. Um, that's the main one, Hunt for Aethys. We're tech, it's technically one level above us, so we're not going to, we're not going to worry about that one. Uh, the Beast of Winter. I'm guessing that's the DLC. Juana. Uh, someone in the gullet ought to know a way to Delver's row. Uh, showing the prince's medallion might attract the attention of a pros mm, prospective buyer in the black market. Ah. Go do that. Do that one. I'm gonna go get some water real quick. Hold on. Boop. Uh, to the gullet. Yes. 
Uh, an hour and 19 minutes. Sure, boom. Star may be able to help. What say? Help how? Poison me? <gasps> a forsaken cat. cat. No Who did we get? Ickus. Uh, plus three all defenses against body affliction and slash mind affliction attacks against uh, attacks. It grants party wide effect. Uh, and plus three all defenses against poison slash disease attacks. Ooh, neat. I think if I recall we were requested to try here. Or also hold on. I think we need to do this. I think we need to do this. <clears throat> a rickety metal cage swings over an abyss. Your clothes, mm, your clothes below with a foul wind from the below, and faint screams and roars echo from the depths. And still, you can make out no details on this distance. some problem guys I'm gonna have to go I greatly apologize okay well, I guess we'll pick this up on Sunday I gotta take care of some I may not be back so have fun guys I greatly apologize so thank you guys for here for very short of a time. I do apologize. I gotta go. I don't think I'll be back. Okay, so we'll pick this up on Sunday, guys. Hopefully, things aren't going. Jeez, that's two days in a freaking row. Something happens. Okay, I'm gonna have to go, guys. This is personal stuff, so have yourselves a fantastic time. Uh, and uh, bye, y'all. Yeah, bye.